New details on the Russian hack and how it played out over several months with a tepid government response. Also, the crisis in Syria. How did we get to this point and what comes next? Then our legal panel joins us as we take a look at the NFL concussion settlement and how it could impact the league as well as the sport on all levels. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I am Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Wednesday evening. As Donald Trump continues to fill out his cabinet, we are learning why Rudy Giuliani didn't get the nod as Secretary of State, and reports are saying the president-elect, he was worried about Rudy's stamina as he's 72 and might not be up for the job. Meanwhile, at the Trump Tower, the parade of visitors continues as Trump continues to make appointments. It's a Trump Tower tech summit. The president-elect sitting down with leaders from some of America's top companies. I'll be there for you and you'll call my people, you'll call me. It doesn't make any difference. We have no formal chain of command. Silicon Valley, not exactly friendly terrain for Trump. Back in July, a group of more than 140 tech executives and entrepreneurs wrote in an open letter that Trump would be, quote, a disaster for innovation due to his views on immigration and the global economy. None of today's attendees signed that letter. There's nobody like the people in this room. Trump announcing Wednesday he's picked former Texas Governor Rick Perry to lead the Department of Energy, an agency he once said he would eliminate. And he's offered the Interior Secretary job to Congressman Ryan Zinke of Montana, a retired Navy SEAL who's pushed for increased drilling. Both selections have been criticized by environmental and clean energy groups. But it's his pick for Secretary of State that's drawing bipartisan concerns over potential conflicts of interest. Last night, Trump launched a public defense of his choice to be the nation's top diplomat, ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson, who has had a long relationship with Russia's Vladimir Putin. Rex is friendly with many of the leaders in the world that we don't get along with. No surprise, the Russians have been effusive in their praise for the oil company CEO. It's like the Bond movie, From Russia with Love. He is getting more love from Russia and people in Russia than he is from the United States Senate. Andrew Whitman following that report here will join me in a second. But the Russian hack attack, still the biggest news in D.C. The Times, in a compelling front page story today, spells out how it all went down and it also provides some juicy details. It explains how a special agent at the FBI called the DNC to discuss how the Bureau thought its network was infiltrated. But the FBI, they were sent to the help desk. Then the DNC thought the agent could have been a prank caller when he kept on calling. Here's how the Times describes it, quote, The DNC's fumbling encounter with the FBI meant the best chance to halt the Russian intrusion was lost. The failure to grasp the scope of the attacks undercut efforts to minimize their impact. And the White House's reluctance to respond forcefully meant the Russians have not paid a heavy price for their actions, a decision that could prove critical in deterring future cyber attacks. And of course, this is highly politicized. Trump, he's saying Democrats are harping on it just because they lost. He doesn't trust the intelligence agencies who are saying, and just about everybody in every intelligence agrees, it was the Russians who did it. But the White House is saying that Trump may have known about it all along. And that's why he said this during the campaign about one Hillary Clinton. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. All right, let's bring in our panel. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and the aforementioned Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, i start with you, Andrew, in terms of the time TikTok on it. I mean, it was thorough here. Forget about the missteps that happened. It was obviously most importantly, and we don't know to the degree how much it's impacted um, how the presidential vote ended up going. Certainly Comey's report that came out 10 days prior certainly had an impact as well. But it was also at House races. When they hacked the DNC or the DCCC's website as well, as many as 20 House races, Republicans were using that hacked information against the Democrats who were running for office. This all stems back to maybe they couldn't have stopped at all, but the idea that they missed so many opportunities to potentially address this until it was too late. The DNC begat John Podesta's emails. Mm -hmm. John Podesta's emails begat so much more. Obviously, this got into uh, House Democrat, uh, you know, information as well. Um, 
Talk about the Keystone cops. You know, I, I'm somewhat sympathetic to the folks who took the phone call at the Hillary Clinton campaign, only because if you got a phone call from somebody who said, like, well, I'm Agent Johnson with the FBI and your, your systems are being, you probably wouldn't believe it either. You, I mean, I why, wouldn't blow why, it off. But why wasn't, like, the FBI should have shown up and been like, mm -hmm. hi, Fair here's enough. my badge, come and take this seriously. How about a high-level meeting? A lot of this, to my mind, goes back to something that we said earlier this week, which is that, to my mind, Professor Obama got in the way of President Obama on this one. He had information that this was happening and could have sounded an alarm in a much larger and more declarative it tone than he did. completely clear. And, do he, you and think he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to be no, seen I as I just partisan. wanted to be clear, though. Did you get from the piece, though, that as far back as a year ago, right, or whenever they first got the things that these group called the Dukes were trying to infiltrate it, that that went as far up as Pennsylvania Avenue. I think the Fed certainly knew about this group because they tried to infiltrate other departments within the U.S. government before, and they believed that they were tied uh, all the way up through the Kremlin. But the idea that this group that they had been dealing with for cyber terror attacks, that it went up to Obama, I'm saying some of the DNC clearly dropped the ball about this. Uh, I, in retrospect, they certainly did. And I agree with the agent should have done more than just made a phone call or six phone calls before he was finally <clears throat> But you have to, to keep, if you're going back to 2015, we're at a point where there were hacks into so many different systems of so many different entities, whether they're governmental or even the Sony hacks. And there was very little response from the Obama administration about something like that, which we had a lot of fun with because it gave some insight into how Hollywood works or doesn't work, but it didn't reach to the to the, the critical mass of, of impacting national security. But it did cross that threshold at some point, and it sort of got swept under the rug. So, yeah, I think there are issues within the timeline, but at some point this thing turned into, as people have said, the equivalent of 9-11 in terms of hacking these systems, and we did not get anywhere close to a 9-11-esque response. In terms of a cyber terror attack, as, as Andrew mentioned, it's interesting, Dom. I've heard CIA directors, former CIA directors from different administrations, including ones that served under Republican presidents, as well as under this president, and even, they said, 100%, it's like global warming, 99% of the scientists agree it was Russia. Everybody agrees. Now, maybe um, their incentivization, people can debate, was different, that they only wanted to get the Democrats or they couldn't hack successfully into the Republicans, but it is the consensus among most they wanted Trump to win and they wanted Hillary to lose for whole things. That all said, uh, listen, we all got the Trump thing wrong, but, but to me, and he is surprised with some, uh, I think, you know, smoke and mirror stuff that he's done, like the carrier deal and all the rest, but it has played well. To me, I think he's misplaying this on the Russia front. He's the only guy. Uh, I, started, I heard somebody today. The Kremlin's cheering for him more than the U.S. Senate is, and that's populated with more Republicans than Democrats. For him to still say, and the only guy who's still saying it, that how do we know it was the Russians? And I have no idea there could be. It could be some 400-pound guy in Jersey. Now you're poking the finger at the intelligence agencies, who you got to work with, who win every fight when it comes, as you know, to leaking. This is a fight, and this is a tone-deaf president that I don't think, he's not playing this one right, okay? Right. And I've been okay. wrong on him before, but there's no upside to how he's doing this. This is going to come out. They're going to do investigations. I pray for his sake, he was not contacted or anyone in his campaign by the Russians beforehand. Because the smell test says, how come they went after them and not him at all, or any Republicans at all? And why did Trump, as we said in July, says keep on hacking him, and he still has yet to criticize Putin for one thing? Smell test is completely out the window, Richard. That, that's how bad this is. Um, I, I, the only thing, I agree with your assessment. The only thing is I feel like we're playing with Trump's stack deck of cards. And what I mean by that is, Besides members of, of the Senate that are raising some serious questions about this, it's almost like his problems with the IRS, right? Before, maybe we would have saw his taxes and maybe we would have found out the truth. You think we're going to find out the truth now? He's president of the United States and in control it's of a, the it's IRS? It's a good point, but here's why I think the analogy falls a little short. There was no law that required him to do that, okay? Um, it was practice. This is true. It was what we all expected our presence to do. Right. Like, for example, we all expect there to be daily press briefings. We now are hearing from the Trump folks. They may not do that. We all expected, for example, here, that a president is clearly 
um, going to address conflicts of interest and he's going to divest himself, blind trust, whatever. He was supposed to tell us that tomorrow. That's going to be pushed off for a month. There are all these norms that we don't see anymore. However, the Senate doesn't need this president's permission to investigate what happened in Russia this because this has to do with national security. And no president has ever won a fight going after the intelligence agencies. And these are career people, Andrew. And now he's making them the enemy and questioning their motivations. So I've never, and they can leak as it says, they can win with a thousand cuts, okay? Mm -hmm. Daily leaks here. He's picking the wrong fight on this one, and he doesn't need to as long as Putin doesn't have photos of him or something. If he says we should investigate this and get to the bottom of it, it's not his problem then. It's Russia's problem. See, he's I, making I, it his problem too. I agree with you to a point that he's picking the wrong fight in terms of, you know, the national security of the United States or perhaps in the best interest even of his presidency. But in terms of what the consequences are, you're putting a lot more faith in, in Congress than I have right now to actually stand up to him no, and, no. Actually, and, actually, and actually take action you're against right, him. You're right, except here's and, where and I he's put also, more faith And he's also, he's also picking fight with these intelligence agencies that are going to wind up giving him intelligence and briefings that he doesn't take. No, no, so, no. Here's where I disagree with you. I agree with you that I'm not inflating my sense just because McCain, Lindsey Graham, and Marco Rubio, um, they got real issues with this. I'm saying there's a conflagration of things going on. He's picked Tillerson to be his State Department guy. We're learning more and more that Tillerson looked out for Exxon more than he did for America, which is okay if you're the CEO of Exxon, yeah. but not if you're the Secretary of State. We are learning that right now they're doing cartwheels um, in Moscow and the Kremlin over not only Tillerson and Trump. There's a lot of people who still think, including our intelligence agencies, that Russia's bad guys. At the same time, they're participating in genocide, which we'll talk about next segment, in Syria. You put these things together, and you also put together a Republican Party that feels under the thumb by this president right now. There are a lot of incentivized people to get to the bottom of what happened. Finally, with all that being said, to pick a fight with the intelligence agencies who are not all appointed by this president, the vast majority are career professionals who don't get paid a lot, but like to not be screwed with, that's a fight no one will win, and it will leak. And because you know why, Andrew, everybody today is talking about the Times. They'll do, we'll see a Washington Post story tomorrow. The press and the CIA do not work directly always for the press. A couple of points in all this. One, I wonder if what we hear from the Trump team will change after Monday, after the Electoral College elects him president. Because right now, this is theoretically... Why would he show because, anything but be, love to be, Russia? Because possibly... Because right now, anything that he says that actually like, lends credence to these reports undermines his prospects of being elected president okay, on but Monday. but why do you think... Give me one rationale, and we're over to the limit. If everything that he's done, which is politically not beneficial to him to defend Russia, which he has done for a year now, why all of a sudden, after the Electoral College confirms we all know what will happen, will he then turn on Russia? I don't think he's going to turn on Russia, but I think he'll he'll give more credence to some of these intelligence reports. And and if they come back in, and if they come back in, and if they come back in, conclude, yeah. But t first of all, Tillerson's likely to get confirmed. And the real issue with Tillerson, I mean, we'll find out through his, we'll, we'll find out through his, fina we'll find out through his financials that. what his relationships are with Russia. I'm more concerned with the Undersecretary of State, who actually will set He's our, not gonna get with confirmed. actually the foreign policy and actually talks to the president. And that's, I think, if it's John Bolton, he there'll be confirmed. pushback on that. I, and I think, okay, I, I, I am of a different mind than you guys. I think we're at the beginning of this story not even the middle or the end. I think there's going to be so much more that will come out. Today's story was just about how much of a long TikTok and mishandling there was. But I think everybody's now established this came from Russia. This came with the blessing, if not the involvement of the Kremlin. Mm -hmm. That they impacted our national elections. But did it have the, bless did it have the blessing of Trump? But did even it come if it the, didn't... That's the even, smoking gun. It has no, to no, come from in the Trump even campaign. Even if it didn't, I'm not talking about that Trump loses his presidency. But you cannot have a love affair with the Russian government going forward if you're Donald Trump if you have had the equivalent of cyber terrorism against this country per perpetrated by an enemy. And if that comes out, he can't do what he seemingly is willing to do with Putin and friends. That's my point. Now, speaking of Putin, he, along with the Iranians, well, they have their hands, blood on their hands as it relates to a tragedy in Aleppo in Syria. And we're going to get into what's gone on and also how this all could have been prevented.